lectures, we have already discussed that how the complement system work, how it can be activated, is that right? And now we will be talking about that how complement system is biologically regulated in our body. Because complement products and system should not be abnormally and unduly activated in a healthy person. It should only be activated when there is need of stimulation or help of immune system or we need augmentation to the inflammatory reaction. So first we will repeat just few steps how complement system is activated rather you will tell me. You have studied that in the last lecture and then we will talk about regulation. So you will tell me how the classical pathway is activated. If this is the bacteria, this is the antigen, right? If this is classic pathway, which antibodies should be there? What type of antibodies should be there? IgG, IgG and? IgG. Yes, IgG and IgM, right? General motors, IgG, IgM, right? So once these antibodies present with the antigen, FC portion of antibody is activated and this start activating the complement through classic pathway. In classic pathway, yes, which complement factor is first of all activated? C1. C1. And then activated C1 will activate which complement? Yes? C4. C4. C4 will lose one part. What is that? C4? A. A. And the part which remains behind is C4? B. Now C4B will activate the another complement, the next one, which is that one? C2. It will lose which part? C2? A. And which part remains behind? C2? B. You remember B for binding. So always remember B part remains bound with the main system. I told you in the last lecture, these are the apples which go away. Babies remain there. Babies lose the apples. Babies mean B parts, which are staying there. A mean apples are losing. So in classical pathway, we discussed that antibody activates C1, C1 activates C4, and break down C4 into A and B. A is into fluid form, fluid phase lost, and B remain there, which activate C2. C2. You should tell me, I've given the lecture, and C2, B remain there, and what is lost? C2, A. And both of them together are called? C3. Yes, please. C3 convertase. convertase. They are called C3 convertase enzyme. Now, after that, there's the central molecule which is stimulated. What is that central molecule? C3. Yes, C? C3. 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 It's fragmented into two parts. Apple goes away. What goes away? C3? A. A. What remains behind? C3. C3? B. And this complex, which com include all this, it means it include C4, B plus C2, B plus C3, B. All these three together, what are they called? C5 convertase. So they are called C5 convertase, right? C5 convertase binds with, yes, C5 convertase will activate which and pro product? Now C5. Again, which will be lost? Apple. C5, A. What is left behind? C5, B. Is that right? Then, yes, what will be activated next? C, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And C5 to C9 hold this complex is called? Membrane, membrane attack complex. That is called good. Membrane attack complex. And this will attack the membranes of the bacteria and produce perforations and bacteria will be dead. Am I clear? This is one pathway. Of course, it's very logical that it should be only activated when there is need of it. Because if it is unduly activated, such product will be produced in the body and they may damage our own tissue. Or if this is unduly activated, inappropriately activated, these products are produced which will activate the mast cells and unduly produce inflammation. Or if they are unduly activated, this will not only activate the mast cells, C5A will also attract neutrophils and undue neutrophilic activity. Is that right? So they should be only activated when there is a need. We'll talk about their regulation. This was classic pathway. Then we have discussed in the last lecture another pathway which was called alternate pathway. In alternate pathway we discussed that IgG and IgM are involved or not involved? 
they are not involved. That is why they are not classical pathway. They are not general motors. They don't make classical cars. Right. Now, an alternate pathway, what really happens? An alternate pathway, there are some uh, molecules on the surface of bacteria or surface of virus or surface of fungus which can directly activate the complement system. Especially endotoxins present on the surface of gram negative, negative bacteria. Endotoxins which are present on the surface of gram negative bacteria, they can activate alternate pathway. Another thing, alternate pathway can also be activated by aggregated IgA. If there are many IgA molecules which are making a clump and aggregation and deposited on some surface, they can activate alternate pathway. You may be thinking that why I am stressing this point. Let me tell you, in some diseases, IgA aggregates are formed in our body and they are not removed. So classical pathway will be unduly alter sorry alternative pathway will be alternate pathway will be unduly activated and tissue will be damaged. Do you know some disease like this? Yes, sorry. No, 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 no. There is a disease which is called IgA nephropathy. Have you heard the name of it? Or it is also called Berger disease, IgA nephropathy. In these patients. IgA aggregates are moving in the blood and they get stuck with the mesangium in the glomeruli. And glomerular mesangium, they get adherent to that. And when a lot of IgA aggregates bind with the mesangial, uh, deposit, their mesangial deposit there, alternate pathway will be activated on the glomerular structure. And if that is activated in the glomerular structure, these, those inflammatory reactions will damage the glomeruli and produce protein urea and hematuria. And we call the person is having Berger disease or IgA nephropathy. Am I clear? Yes. Is that right? There is another disease in which IgA aggregates are accumulated under the skin and in the GIT. And there is inappropriate activation of alternate pathway under the skin and in GIT mucosa. So there are skin lens with GIT dysfunction. If you tell me the name of the disease, I can offer you $100 because luckily today I have. Someone paid me right now. <laughs> Who likes to have $100? You likes to have, but you have to give the answer also. Okay, let's have this. If you give the right answer, I give you $100. And if you give wrong answer, you give me $100. IgA aggregates present in GIT mucosa and under the skin and inappropriately activating the complement system, alternate pathway and producing a disease. Yes. Yes, no idea. Dermatitis herpetiformis. You never heard of it. Dermatitis, dermatitis, inflammation of skin. And initially it was wrongly thought that it is due to herpes. So it was given a name, Dermatitis herpetiformis, right? Okay, I'll give you another disease in which IgA aggregates deposit in body. I just, by the way, remember in this lecture, right? That IgA aggregates move in the body and they are not cleared. And they deposit into multiple tissues in the body. Let me tell you. Some of them deposit in the GIT. And usually child develops abdominal cramps. Some of them develop into synovial membrane, polyarthritis. Some of them develop under the skin, skin rashes. Some of those deposits develop in the glomeruli, protein urea. Some of them develop, those deposits develop in the lymph nodes, lymphadenopathy. You have to tell me diagnosis. Okay, I will put the cl classical clinical situation. Seven year old child had one or two weeks back upper respiratory tract viral infection. After that, he developed fever with abdominal pain, rashes, especially on lower limbs, polyarthritis, protein urea, generalized lymphadenopathy. Please tell me the answer. Even some pleuritic pain and to be very classical, pericardial pain also sometimes. Have you heard of Hino, Shaolin, Purpura? Never heard of things like this. You never go beyond ischemic heart disease. <laughs> Hino, Shaolin, Purpura. Right? In this 